what's up guys welcome back to double d vintage baseball cards episode number six um super fired up this is super exciting for me i get to talk about baseball cards and the thing that i love to collect i just i can't stress it enough i'm my mind's kind of blown right now. So many of you guys have left some amazing comments. You guys have subscribed to me. It means you want to watch these videos I'm doing. Um, it means so much to me. It's so appreciative. My wife it has been very encouraging to me to, to start this. We had some concerns and I asked a few of the guys in the past, um, you know, I just had some questions about things and you guys have been so great out there, the YouTube community. Um, my mind's been blown away just by the the people who have left comments and, and just everyone. It's been amazing. So today I'm bringing this 1975 out because um, one, I had a comment wanting to see some of my books that I created and I collect. Um, and then... I don't know the etiquette of mentioning everyone's names. I should have looked, so I, I, I apologize. I don't have you, I, I don't remember, but I remember the comment. So this one's for you. And then also, um, I had something pretty crazy happen. I was watching, I just decided to turn on, I, all the guys that subscribe to me, I turn on their channels and I like to see, um, I wish I had time to watch everyone's all the way from the beginning. But you guys, some of you guys have been on here for 10 years plus. It's insane, I, I didn't even know it existed. So I'm going back and watching some and I clicked on, I'm going to look down, I know his name's Nate, um, Tops85401. He left some really awesome comments, like four in a row and like looked like he was watching all my things. I was like, wow, this is so cool. I showed my wife and then I just randomly, I went back and I looked on his and I clicked on one that had, a, the cover was Robin Yunt and George Brett and I was just like, well, okay, I'm going to click on that one. Normally I start a little earlier, but it was just happened. He just posted it and uh, and he mentioned me in there and I was just like me and my wife are just drinking coffee. It's not like it's world news now or NBC news, but to me in this world that I just love, I'm just like, I mean, I've said it a hundred times, uh, you know, I was in this by myself and I had a couple guys in different stages for cracking boxes and stuff like that different stages but for the collecting aspect I, no one told me anything about collecting and this you know for baseball cards and vintage and this community exists it was so cool so thanks Nate I appreciate that man it was unbelievable it's blown my mind you mentioned me in your video and you talked about the two card that I love I mean Robin Young my favorite card of all time I just absolutely thank you for that i mean my wife got to see that so she was super motivated um so with that said any of you guys that i have you know i'm not gonna mention some people i'm gonna mention some people i'm just trying to just i don't have a bunch of notes on my shows i'm just gonna be myself and talk through my episodes and i'm gonna take notes on some guys so i apologize if if i'm offending anyone out there that would help me along um and give me encouragement and left epic post um i don't know the etiquette on youtube yet do i mention everybody and anyways let's continue with the episode so i'm gonna dive into these books right here um this is an ungraded version so this is 1975 ungraded and i'm just gonna kind of i'll zoom you guys in a closer look so you can see um i don't own all the 1975 tops cards um i don't i'm still working on the collection I do have a collection 1975 that I have, I thought I had completed and graded, but there's one card missing that I just realized not too long ago, not just, but when I was putting this book together, so I'm still looking for the copy I want. Um, but I, I collected this years and years ago, I started this collection. Now, these were like $3 each. So now they're a lot more expensive. So now that I'm missing one, I'm trying to figure it out, but you'll see why I collect these, the 1975 MVP the history of the card it just fascinates me you get to see the mvp of every year it's like you know i wasn't that good in school but if it was in baseball card form i would have been a valedictorian right like i love them that much that i i want to teach myself 
Who won the MVP in 1959? You know, who won the MVP in 1960? So I'll go through these books and you can see some of my favorite tops cards that I collect. Um, you know, the 75 tops. I have books for all the years and some I have more of than others. 75, this is probably more than most of them because um, they just don't cost a whole bunch of money. And when I was collecting and buying most of these cards is way back when they were, you know, not that expensive. So I'm just going to talk about these, go through them. I'm not going to spend hours on them. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode. Super random, but I get to uh, show off a little more of my collection. So thanks, guys. I'm going to zoom you guys in now. Okay, see you in a second. Woo! Yeah, guys. All right. Welcome to the close up. So let's start right here. Um, like I was saying before and in past videos, I'm not a huge set collector or a player collector. I'm not going to collect every single card um, of one player. Um, I'm more of a Hall of Fame collector and cards that I just like. Um, some cards I just love the look of the design and sometimes there's no Hall of Famer in that design and I just love it. Um, but today, 1975 tops, these MVPs, I actually collected the entire series. So as I was saying earlier in the video, it, it was like a history lesson and I got to learn everything there was to know about these cards and the, I mean, the, you know, the players on the cards. So, you know, you go from 1951, 52, three, four, I got the whole list except for one, um, I also was going to go on a tangent on a collection tangent. <laughs> I was going to collect every card on these. Because the reason I started this collection, um, I started this years and years ago. I just thought it was awesome because I could get a vintage card, 1975 tops, my favorite set. Just the colors just pop. I just love it. And then you get minis of every card. And I, as... You know, as a kid growing up, these were like the coolest cards on the planet. Cause for me, they were they were like a dollar back in the day, and still can get them for a dollar on eBay. You know, and you got two cards in there, 1955 tops right there. You got Roy Campanella mini and a Yogi Berra mini. How can you go wrong? And then you get to learn the history of the card. So, I mean, it's so cool to go through these and see how many guys won MVPs. Numerous guys you wouldn't even expect. Um, so we'll kind of just go through these. This goes all the way up to 58. 1959 right here. 60, 61, 62. Dick Groat Dick was a Hall of Famer in 1960. I mean, how cool is that? Right? You can still get his card. Really nice MVP of a 1960 player for very inexpensive. Pretty cool. Um, oh, this is cool right here. Look at these guys. Oh man, look at the history you get to see right in front of you. I love these cards. Um, so like, I'll just pull one out so you can kind of see. I experimented with these cards. And you can see, you know, there's quite a few AO C's in here. But when I look at the colored cards, it's really hard for me. My mind doesn't care that it's off-centered. Let's put it that way. These colored borders, it's much harder to tell if it's off-centered. I mean, to me, I'm still trying to look at it. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look like an off C OC top to bottom, I guess, you know. But it looks centered this way. And when you just check it out, it looks good. So that's what I look for. And, I mean, I'm telling you, that card is probably like $5. You know, once you buy a, I always bought these in groups. So if there's like three I needed, I'd buy them all so you'd save on shipping because they weren't that expensive. And it was my way to experiment with the OC market too, because I never was into these. And then, you know, the off center, I always shined it away from them. But once I started realizing you can get some incredible cards with the OC label, the OC off center label. I mean, look at this nine right here. It's, it's perfect. It looks like a 10. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It is, I mean, okay, there's something wrong with it. It's off centered. It is off-centered, but not by too much. I mean, to my mind, so 
I totally understand the centering thing. I love centering on cards, but some cards you can go without. And, and I'm always going to stick by that. I love that. So look at that. Oh, man, that's so cool, yeah? It's fun for me to go back through these because, you know, you don't look at every card you own every single day. That's for sure. You can, even with my wall and my books. I have a lot of cards. Um, look at that. Another 9 OC. Another one. I keep preaching the 9 OC. Looks really nice. Probably cost the same as a... I mean, these were cheap. These, I don't know what I paid for these, but... I mean, I, I could look at my spreadsheet, but off the top of my head, this is probably, you know, $8. I remember having a budget of $10 on all of these. I, I did pay a little more for some, but I'd have to look. So, oh, here's my missing card right here. So 67. So it was this 67 right here. Wrong slot. It was the 69. I have it. I think I have it in raw form, um, but I might not. So somehow I missed the card. So, you know how that goes. Um, need to take a little better Excel sheet. I must have made a mistake in it, but I did notice that. And so I've been looking for one ever since, and I just haven't found the one I wanted. Oh, next. Look at these cards. I started with just collecting eights. So just a standard eight. Standard eights are obviously, I mean, obviously, but to me, they're definitely the best looking, best bang for your dollar. Or they were at one time. Now they're crazy expensive but you know eights are perfect eights are the tens for vintage in my opinion you don't need anything better than this for me it's i can look at that and just be like wow i just pulled that out of a pack yesterday so that's amazing pop on through here okay well so we finished that set now we're on to some rookies oh this is an autograph i love this autograph Yogi Berra. This is my only ballpoint pen autograph, but I love the card. I absolutely love these, obviously. So to have them on an autograph on there, and the autograph looks really good. I was really stoked on this thing. And I think I paid around $50 for it. It's probably still around that price. Never gone up, never gone down. So that's cool. <laughs> Keep on moving, low grade, Gary Carter, a couple of Bob Gibsons. You know, I, I like to buy multiple cards, as you can tell. I have a fascination with some cards over others. Um, and like I said, I wasn't a set builder, so I just like what I like. I see it. If I like the Bob Gibson, I'll buy like, you know, who knows, four of them. And I'll, you know, I'll end up probably selling that one, but at least in the end, I'll end up with the one I really, really want. Here's a really awesome card. Steve Garvey, graded an eight and an auto 10. It's a beautiful card. This is one of my favorite uh, 75 cards I own, actually. I would put this right behind the George Brett, and that is right behind the Robin Yunt. So, very nice card right here. Love that one. That's an awesome, awesome card. Super stoked about that one. Uh, the Steve Carlton. I love the look of that Steve Carlton. You got the Pete Rose, the Jackson, Jim Palmer. Another card right here I really love. Frank Robinson. I don't know, something about this card. I know this one's a little, it's kind of a lot off-centered. Um, but the look of the card, the color of the card, I always loved this card. So I have this in a mini as well. Beautiful looking card. I don't know, something about certain cards, right? They just pop in your own mind. And this is one of those that it just fascinates me. The colors on it, everything about it. And then you get his, his stats are later in life. So look at the stats, right? So sick. All right. So that finishes that book. We'll go grab another one. We'll go through, uh, I'll just go through a little bit of the ungraded. And then a little bit more, I have a whole nother graded book. And I'll just pop through that one just so you guys don't get bored to death. Um, we'll put this back in the box so you can you guys can see again. I showed this before, but this is where I store them. I got my label here, book number two, 1975. And I bought these on Uline Custom. I mean, I mean, they had them on there, but I bought them specifically for this. I put these guys right here 
inside fits perfectly and I close it up. Everything is cherry. And then this goes in my safe. So there we go. Got the label on there. Let me grab the other ball, uh, the other one. I'm gonna go for, uh, well, we'll go for these guys right here. A little more graded stuff. I won't go all the way through these. This is a big book. So as I was saying before, I have an obsession with Robin Yun. Um, some of these I, I chose, some of these I picked out, you know, really carefully. And then some of these I bought, they were in a lot or they were just super inexpensive. And I kind of wanted to see, I always experiment with certain things. Like this one's really far off. This was in a lot of cards I bought. It probably ended up costing me like 20 bucks or something. But like this guy right here, here's another one of those eight OCs. To me, it's, it's perfect. That's it. That's a 10 in my, in my collector's eyes. I put this on the wall. It's perfect. It's off center, top to bottom, but only if you really know, and you know, I, I, it's okay that everyone can disagree with me. I, I still love it. I'm gonna keep buying these. I love these things. So inexpensive for, compared to a seven, you can get this way cheaper than a seven, a hundred bucks. I think I probably paid or even less cherry. But then you got this 80C, horribly off-centered. I don't collect these. Um, I'll end up selling this eventually. Um, I just have a really hard time selling the Robin Yant 75s because I used to sell them and, and I regret all of them. So I just keep buying them. I got a couple more on the wall too. So these aren't all of them. But yeah, that wasn't a lot. So I didn't actually choose that one. And then the Bretts. Um, I used to have an eight and then I sold that to when I was selling some of my collection. Ooh, see how they pop up sometimes if they're not perfectly flat, but that's okay. I normally have the mat behind it. Keep them from any damage. So there's your only drawback to these Ultra Pro cases. But if you're careful and you look at them on a table, who cares? Um, George Bretts, I'm all about color on these 75s, centering isn't as big as big as of a deal as most people probably have it um but 5.5s in the 5.5s i like the color and the centering i don't care too much about the corners um i've been getting some really nice looking ones of those for very inexpensive and then you got this bvg a couple of you bvg fans out there really nice looking card i mean this is i, I would put this in the 8 oc or even 9 oc category um, I haven't really found anything wrong with this minus the centering. So 6.5, sometimes you can absolutely score. So that was a really nice find. So I always keep my eyes peeled for 6.5s in this. Yeah, nice looking card. So I'm more just, you know, I don't have super crazy. I have to have this exact thing. As long as the color is good and I can... I can look at it, enjoy it, then I'm stoked. So you got Willie McCovey and probably got a few of his. Yeah, here's another mini Frank Robinson, a little better centering on that one. Burt Blylevin, OC top to bottom. I can live with that. And then got an eight right here, mini Yaz. And then we got some extra stuff here. There's the, another CSG that I've purchased on purpose off-centered. I just kind of wanted to see, I just kind of like to learn about them. I know I can always sell them for what I paid, so um, that won't stay in my collection too long. I'll be selling that, I'm sure. Um, and then some extra ones that I bought, didn't know I had, and even some, you know, like this card. I just love that card that I buy it. Um, and then you got, you know, I got a lot of the commons back here and high grades. Just because I like the look of them, of them. Ron Say. Always like having Ron Say's. And the cups, rookie cups. You can't go wrong with those. Um, yeah, so there's the other one. Rated version. And I guess I showed you guys that whole book. Okay, we'll do the ungraded now. Might as well. You guys can turn it off if you want or keep watching. I'm going to keep filming here. I'm having a good time going through these again. It's so fun for me. Basically just hanging out with my friends and looking at baseball cards. So this is 1971 Fleer um, until, I'm not sure how far it goes back, but we'll get to the 75s. Show some of these off later. 
75s. Oh, love me team cards. I tell you guys, I love those things. There we go. There we go. All right. Ungraded stuff. So ungraded stuff to make the book. You're either a super Hall of Famer, super superstar, where you you know I can grade you a two and you'll still make the book, or you got or you're a you know a Mike Schmidt or Phil Negro. I guess he's a little higher up, but you know you can get fours and make the book. But other guys, commons, you got to be four really good looking or higher, mainly higher. Um, but yeah, here we go. So I just put my grades on them, like I always show you guys. This Johnny Bench, pull this guy out. See, the cases fit so perfect in here. This is a really nice card. Graded this an eight. Could be a seven, the off-centeredness, but the corners, the color, everything looks really good on it. So one day I'll send a lot of these, you know, a lot of my ungraded stuff. Get it graded one day. But like I said, I've only had, I think it was three or four cards ever graded. I love Carl. I love this car, as you can see. <laughs> Another one of those that I have a problem with. Got to keep buying it. Um, yeah, so a lot of the guys that, you know, well, Rod Carew. Put the 8OC on there, right? Let's see. God, uh, there's a couple sick ones in here. I mean, I just, a great, I love that card right there. Prop bar. That's a cool card. His helmets flew off. He looks like, it looks like a Hank Aaron right there. Braves uniform that year. So cool. I love that card. 8OC, that's what I graded it. Looks like one. Look at it again. Yeah, cool looking card. So yeah, just uh yeah, collect commons as long as they're good grades. I have a bunch of the non, you know, not good grades, but they don't make the book. Um let's see if I find any really more really cool ones in here. These guys all gotta be like sevens and sixes centered and higher. Make this thing. Oh, angels, of course. Oh, another rookie cup. Love that. And then some extra stuff here. That card's awesome. And then, yeah, I got all these guys. See how much I love the MVPs. And then end it with my only ungraded Robin Yunt rookie card, which isn't in that grade of condition. I mean, it's okay, but it's off-center. What did I give it, a 5? 5? 5.5. 5. There we go. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty good, actually, looking at it. Centering's off. Okay, I did all right looking at that one. All right, cool. I bought that from uh, my local uh, card show. There's like, you know, two two vendors that come with vintage stuff and the same guys for, you know, for the last five years. But I always kind of just go through their collection and sometimes they bring some new stuff. So they brought that not too long ago. That was really cool. He hooked me up on that one. That was awesome. He knows I'm into him and wear that shirt all the time, so... Uh, yeah, the rest of the book is some other stuff, and I'll show uh, show that off another time. I, I, I have more vintage than I have ungraded um, books, so that's why my vintage books are a little bigger and more stacked. But I will show you guys some more books in the future, too. I, I love going through them. Super fun. Just boom. What do we got? All right. That's cool. But yeah, I'll show some of, this some of this stuff off in the future. Super excited about this. So, again... Oh, I better pop it off to, boom, end it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the feedback I get, all the comments, all the subscribers out there. Super stoked. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you guys this. So my wife, continue on with the 75 tops theme, I sell on eBay under 314, 14 sports cards, which I've showed you guys, talked about it before. I'm a top seller on there. I've been selling on there for over 20 years. She made me these a couple months ago. Um, I got a couple different versions. I got the 87 as well. But when you buy a card from me, I put this behind the card, you know, the brand new card saver, put the card right over this. So when it comes, it's really cool looking. But if any of you guys want to shop on my um, eBay, you can use this discount code one time. It's not good on um, graded cards, but I, th I think it's up to a $5 card or $25 card, something like that. Oh, $20. There it is um yeah you guys are welcome to use it so sometimes when you buy a card you get this one sometimes you get this one with no discount the next time um just depends on which ones i have cut and random luck so and i have different versions of these so my wife's super awesome makes these really cool cards for me so anyways yeah super stoked 
hit the like button, subscribe. Super psyched to be in this with everybody. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you guys later. Double shaka.